Well, how you doing, everybody? No, you are not seeing things. I have been talked into participating in Movember this year, and I have no idea how this is going to look by the end of the month. Either I will look sexy as hell, or I'll just look incredibly stupid, and you'll all have something to point and laugh at. Either way, you're welcome. But we're not here to talk about my new stash. We're here to talk about Killers of the Flower Moon, the latest film from legendary director Martin Scorsese, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, and Lily Gladstone. This is based on the true story of the Osage murders in 1920s Oklahoma. DiCaprio plays Ernest Burkhart, who, after returning home from World War I, courts an Osage woman, Molly Kyle, played by Gladstone. He intends to marry her, at least in part, so his children will inherit the family's oil head rights. And under the guidance of Burkhart's uncle, William King Hale, played by De Niro, he orchestrates the murders of several high-profile Osage, including members of Molly's family. And a whole lot of murderin' ultimately leads to an investigation from the BOI, a precursor to the FBI. Much ado has been made about this movie's 3 hour and 26 minute runtime. You heard me correct. I myself was concerned because Scorsese's previous movie, The Irishman, had a similar runtime and boy it did not need to be that long. I have said it before and I will say it again. The appropriate length for your movie is however long you need to tell your story. The Irishman did not need three and a half goddamn hours. Scorsese is apparently also very much against having intermissions in his movies and made some really stupid comments about that to the press. One of the things he actually said, and I still cannot believe this, well, people will sit through a stage production for three hours, surely they can do the same for a movie, except stage plays usually have intermissions. Like, of all the examples you could have picked, Martin, that's what you went with? And there actually was a time when Hollywood wasn't against having intermissions if the movies had a long runtime. And boy do I long for the days when we did not have to risk a UTI to see a movie. Funnily enough, shortly after I read Scorsese's comments about intermissions, I happened to be playing Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and this popped up. Apparently Scorsese and Bowser have something in common, and that can't be a good sign. But all that being said, the runtime for Killers of the Flower Moon is honestly perfectly fine. Unlike The Irishman, there is very little wasted motion, no real pacing issues to speak of. This is a story that needed three and a half hours to be told. So I'm not going to complain about this movie's length, although I think it goes without saying that if you see it in a theater, you should not get the large soda. The story is depressing as hell, all the more so because this shit actually happened. The Osage people discover oil on their land, which leads to many years of wealth and prosperity for the tribe. But eventually, it's all ruined by, say it with me now, fucking white people. Several members of the tribe, including members of Molly's family, are senselessly killed, and all because Burkhardt and Hale weren't content with just having a piece of the pie, they wanted the whole damn thing. And it's not like they needed the money, Hale was already rich and powerful thanks to a combination of cattle ranching and insurance fraud. But what do all men with money and power want? More money and power. You should not go into this movie expecting a happy ending. It is true that Burkhardt and Hale eventually did serve time in prison, but the Osage still had to bury far too many of their people way before their time. Molly survives but only makes it to the age of 50 due to diabetes, and one of her children dies of whooping cough. Some of the people who worked with Hale managed to get away without prison time. The people who did this deserved much worse than they got, and the Osage deserved far better. DiCaprio is, shockingly, still a very good actor, and this is one of the few times I have seen him play a character that is truly pathetic. I do think that is the best word for it. Throughout the movie, he is driven by his own senseless greed and a need to please his uncle, who has basically been like a father figure to him. And not only does he help to orchestrate all of these senseless killings, but he actually poisons his own wife at Hale's request in order to keep her under control. And he is clearly conflicted by that and disgusted with his actions, even going so far as to take some of the poison himself. Because he... hmm... I don't know if I want to go far enough to say that he loves Molly. I do think he believes he loves his wife, much in the same way any abusive person would say they love their families. And I think he wants to love Molly, but his greed just will not get out of the way. De Niro is so sleazy in this movie, good god. 
He is very controlling of his family and the other people around him, very manipulative. And even as he's doing all of these horrible things behind the scenes, he is publicly presenting himself as a friend to everyone. And he's publicly showing support and sympathy to the families of the Osage, whose very murders he orchestrated. Just, he is a very punchable human being. I have never seen Lily Gladstone prior to this movie, but God, she was fantastic. Molly's relationship with Ernest is actually kind of charming at first, but of course that doesn't last. And during the scenes where she is getting constantly poisoned by her husband, she looks an absolute mess and really sells that with her performance. And her strength and determination also shine through when, despite her condition, she goes off to D.C. to visit with President Coolidge and beg him for help with all these murders that are going on. Like, could you maybe send someone down from D.C. to help stop all these murders from happening, please and thank you? If you got the time. But yeah, she's very talented and I do hope we see more of her. My only real issue with this movie, and this is something that others have already touched on, is the brief appearance by Brendan Fraser as Hale's attorney. What the hell happened here? His character was immediately so over the top... And for a second, I was wondering if I had accidentally dozed off in a different movie it started. And I do want to make it clear I am not blaming him. I know he's a better actor than this. I've seen him do it. If this is the performance he gave, then the only conclusion I can come to is this is exactly what Scorsese wanted. And the blame falls to him. But it's so weird that it happened. It just does not fit the tone of the rest of the movie. It's wildly out of place. It doesn't feel like it's supposed to be comic relief. It's just... What happened? But aside from Fraser's performance and Scorsese's weird-ass comments about intermissions, this is an excellent film. I will not be surprised if this gets many Oscar nominations, and it is well worth seeing at any price. Although, if you do not want to sit in the theater for three and a half hours just to watch this movie, I totally understand that. You are welcome to wait for this to hit Apple TV Plus or VOD or whatever, but one way or another, you should see this movie. And that's all I have to say about Killers of the Flower Moon. Till next time, take care.